Hey there, future CNAs, ready to level up your skills and competence? This video is just the beginning. We have even more CNA practice tests and lessons waiting for you. And the best part, it's completely free. So check it out. Now let's get started. Question one. When washing your hands, apply the soap A, after removing gloves, B, before wetting your hands, C, before turning on the faucet, D, after wetting your hands. The correct answer is D, after wetting your hands. Wetting your hands helps soap remove soil, bacteria, and oil from the skin. Water temperature doesn't need to be hot. After applying soap, rub hands together for 20 to 30 seconds. Scrub between fingers and under the nails. Wash at least one inch above the wrist. Rinse with clean water, with fingers pointed down, to allow the water to run down into the sink. Dry hands well. Question two. All body fluids are considered infectious, except A, saliva, B, sweat, C, blood, D, semen. The correct answer is B, sweat. Standard precautions mean that every body fluid is considered to be potentially infectious. These include all blood and blood products, body fluids such as semen and vaginal secretions. During dental or oral procedures, Saliva is considered potentially infectious. Sweat and tears do not contain blood or pathogens in large numbers, so they aren't treated as infectious. Question three. Which conditions promotes the growth of bacteria? A, warm, light, dry. B, dark, warm, moist. C, warm, dark, dry. D, cold, dark, moist. The correct answer is B, dark, warm, moist. All bacteria need water to survive. This is why a client's dressings must be kept dry. The human body provides the perfect temperature for bacteria to quickly multiply. Most types of bacteria prefer darkness because the sun's UV light can destroy it. Question four. During dinner, a client who is HIV positive accidentally breaks a glass and cuts himself. What is the proper procedure? A. Use a long-handled mop to wipe up the blood. B. Begin to fill out an incident report. C. Call the paramedics to treat the client. D. Block off the area until it can be cleaned. The correct answer is D. Block off the area until it can be cleaned. Regardless of a client's medical history, all blood spills are treated as potentially infectious. The first step is to clear the area to prevent others from access. Put on disposable gloves. Double gloving is appropriate. The spill must be cleaned up quickly with a strong bleach solution. All healthcare facilities are required to have OSHA approved materials on hand and a strict procedure is followed. Cleanup is done with disposable items. Items are then double bagged, then placed in a hazard bag for proper disposal. The client's injury is treated following standard precaution protocols for blood exposure. All healthcare employees must attend annual training on bloodborne pathogens. Question 5. At the start of a bed bath, Mrs. Smith takes a washcloth to clean her perineal area and puts it back into the basin of water. The nurse aide should A. Remind Mrs. Smith that baths are done head to toe. B. Clean the basin and replace the water. C. Remove the washcloth and continue with a fresh one. D. Add some sanitizer to the water and proceed. The correct answer is B. Clean the basin and replace the water. When giving or assisting with a bed bath, always start with the face and neck. Keep the areas not being washed covered with blankets for warmth and privacy. After washing the body, change the water. The genital area is the last to be washed. If the patient is able to help, let them wash. Females are washed from front to back. When washing males, wash around the testicles. To clean the buttocks, place the client on their side, facing away from you. Question six. After cleaning a resident's dentures, you remove and discard your gloves. What is the next step? A, proceed to your next assigned resident. B, pull back the resident's privacy curtain. C, help the resident insert their dentures. D. Wash your hands. The correct answer is D. 
wash your hands. Although gloves add an important layer of protection, they are not considered completely barrier-proof. There can be microscopic holes or tears in the gloves. Hand washing is always performed before and after each patient contact, as well as after removing gloves. This also removes any powder or irritants from the gloves. Leave the discarded gloves in the patient's room before going to another room. Question 7. Precautions for a patient in respiratory isolation include all except a gown, b special air system, c mask, d private room. The correct answer is a gown. Respiratory isolation prevents contaminated air from being breathed by others. Patients with serious respiratory illnesses, such as influenza or tuberculosis, sneeze or cough droplets into the air. The patients are confined to a private room with a special air system. Staff and visitors wear masks. Proper hand washing technique is essential. Question 8. When wearing gloves, it is important to remember A. Alcohol wipes do not affect gloves. B. Gloves are sturdy enough for jewelry. C. Gloves are worn when using disinfectants. D. Gloves can be left on for as long as needed. The correct answer is C. Gloves are worn when using disinfectants. Besides protecting against possible infections, gloves should be worn when using disinfectants and chemicals to avoid skin irritation. Always change gloves if hands become moist. Some chemicals, such as alcohol, can harm gloves. Gloves can develop holes and tears from jewelry and long nails. After putting gloves on, check for small rips or holes before starting a procedure. Question 9. The most important way to prevent the spread of infection is A. Sanitizer B. Hand washing C. Antibiotics D. Vaccinations The correct answer is B. Hand washing Hand washing is the international standard for preventing the spread of infection. Hands must be washed before and after each client contact, after removing gloves, using the toilet, and coughing or sneezing. Hands are always washed after touching a dirty or contaminated item, handling food and shaking hands. Pet owners should wash their hands after picking up waste and handling pet toys or objects. Question 10. After Mr. Johnson's bath, the nurse aide realizes she needs another towel to completely dry Mr. Johnson. The nurse aide should A. Ask a co-worker to bring a towel from the clean linen cart. B. Use Mr. Johnson's clothing to dry him. C. Ask Mr. Johnson to wait while you quickly go to get a clean towel. D. Use a towel left in the shower room by another aide. The correct answer is A. Ask a co-worker to bring a towel from the clean linen cart. Gather all supplies before beginning a bath or shower. If you discover that you need something, never leave a client alone, even for a few minutes. Ask a co-worker to get what you need. Each client should use clean towels and linens. If all towels are not used during a bath, do not return them to the clean supply cart. They must be treated as soiled. Question 11. Personal protective equipment. PPE is used to A. Minimize the need for hand washing. B. Eliminate all infections in patients. C. Reduce exposure for healthcare workers. D. Discourage visitors from lengthy stays. The correct answer is C. Reduce exposure for healthcare workers. Personal protective equipment, PPE, means the clothing and devices that are designed to protect the person wearing them from being exposed to or passing along an infection or disease. Every healthcare setting has PPE, such as gloves and masks. For example, patients and visitors may be asked to wear a mask if they don't feel well. Other PPE includes face shields, special gowns, caps, and face masks, or respirators. PPE also protects patients who are at risk, such as bone marrow recipients. Most PPE is disposable, but some settings require individual PPE, such as well-fitting goggles. PPE never eliminates the need for proper hand hygiene. Question 12. While Mr. Jones is visiting his wife, 
You notice that he is sneezing and blowing his nose. What is the best step? A. Teach him proper hand washing. B. Move them to a private area. C. Ask the nurse for a decongestant. D. Tell him to leave until he is better. The correct answer is A. Teach him proper hand washing. Teach Mr. Jones about respiratory hygiene, also called cough etiquette. When a visitor, patient, or staff member is coughing and sneezing, proper technique can keep pathogens from spreading. Covering the mouth is the first important step. Using tissues and disposing them in a receptacle is better than using the hands to cover the mouth. Hands should be washed after each episode. Stay at least three feet from others. If this is not possible, a mask should be worn. Question 13. When caring for a patient with MRSA, the nurse aide should wear a sterile isolation suit, b surgical goggles, c rebreather mask, d gown and gloves. The correct answer is d gown and gloves, MRSA, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, is an infection that is difficult to treat because it is resistant to many antibiotics. People who are sick, elderly, or have weak immune systems are susceptible. Most often, it appears as a skin infection or an infection around a surgical site, feeding tube, or catheter. It is spread by contact. To prevent getting or spreading it, use standard precautions when providing care to a patient with MRSA. Hand washing is essential, as always. Wear gloves and a gown when in touching the patient. If any splash or spray of body fluid is expected, wear mask and a face shield or goggles. Question 14. All are types of pathogens, except A. Fungus. B. Virus. C. Bacteria. D. Ebola. The correct answer is D. Ebola. Pathogens are microorganisms that cause disease and illness. Everyone is exposed to pathogens, but when the immune system can't fight, the client becomes sick. A bacterium, virus, or fungus can each be a pathogen. Examples of a bacterial infections are pneumonia and food poisoning. A virus can cause chickenpox and hepatitis. An example of a fungal infection is athlete's foot. Question 15. It is important that a client's dressings remain a snug to keep out bacteria, b loose to admit fresh air, c clean and dry, d secured by tape. The correct answer is c clean and dry. Dressing should always remain clean and dry. If a dressing becomes moist, bacteria can multiply and cause a serious infection. If you observe a damp dressing or any signs of redness and inflammation, notify the nurse. Check your facility's policies regarding the role of the nurse aide in wound care. Sometimes only a nurse can assess or change a dressing. Question 16. Which of the following hospital floors would you most likely expect to see reverse isolation precautions? A. Surgical. B. Oncology. C. Obstetrics. D. Alzheimer's. The correct answer is B. Oncology. You would most likely expect to see reverse isolation precautions on a floor of patients with decreased immune systems, such as cancer patients. It is appropriate to wear a gown, glove, and a mask to prevent the spread of infection to these patients. Question 17. What are standard precautions? A. Hand washing or hand sanitizing between patients. Wearing gloves if handling bodily fluids. B. Wearing gloves at all times. Only hand washing between patients. C. Wearing gloves and a mask while in the patient's room. D. Gloves and hand washing is not required between patient rooms. The correct answer is A. Hand washing or hand sanitizing between patients, wearing gloves if handling bodily fluids. Standard precautions include hand washing or sanitizing and wearing gloves when bodily fluids are present such as urine, stool, or sputum. Standard precaution assumes that all bodily fluids are considered infectious. Question 18. Which of the following patients is likely to be placed on contact precautions in a hospital setting? A. A patient with MRSA. 
B. A patient who is coughing. C. A patient who just had hip surgery. D. An elderly patient. The correct answer is A. A patient with MRSA. A patient with MRSA or methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus would be placed on contact precautions. MRSA is a commonly known and widespread bacterium that is resistant to antibiotics. Question 19 of sepsis is defined as blank. A. The absence of all microorganisms. B. The absence of disease causing germs. C. A urinary infection. D. A pathogenic infection. The correct answer is B. The absence of disease causing germs. A sepsis is defined as the absence of disease causing germs. Aseptic techniques should be used to interrupt the chain of infection. It is surgical asepsis that is defined as the absence of all microorganisms, including spores. A pathogenic infection is an invasion of the body by a pathogen or disease or germ, and a urinary infection is only one type of infection. Question 20. The chain of infection includes the blank. A. Germ, agent, reservoir, exit portal, mode of transmission, entry port, and susceptible host. B. Active natural, active artificial, passive natural, and passive artificial. C. Opportunism, weakness, immunity, and colonization. D. Intrinsic, extrinsic, internal, and external transmission. The correct answer is A. Germ, agent, Reservoir, exit portal, mode of transmission, entry port, and susceptible host. The chain, or cycle of infection, includes the germ, or microorganism, the reservoir, the exit portal, the mode of transmission, the entry port, and the susceptible host. The types of immunity, not the chain of infection, include active natural immunity, active artificial immunity, passive natural immunity, and passive artificial immunity. It is important to learn the cycle, or chain, of infection, so you can stop the spread of infection by breaking one or more of these chains. For example, you will break the chain of infection when you stop the mode of transmission by washing your hands. Thank you for watching this video and we hope it was helpful. Click the link right here to start your free three-day trial to CNA Premium, which has over 1,000 practice questions that will help you pass your CNA exam on your first try.